Hi YouTube, I trained as a natural history illustrator but now I do um, adult education classes um, and this is one of my favourite kind of uh, sessions that I do with my students. So it's just a basic tree um, using a sponge but this first stage what I'm doing is just starting off with the base of the trunk uh, and this is just using umber. Um, you don't want your um, pigment to be too strong um, so keep it fairly light just because this is going to be where the light is catching the tree trunk so you, it needs to be like the kind of the highlight uh, color for the trunk so then I just leave a gap and then I do the next part of the trunk and then leave another gap and I'm just doing a few branches coming off here and there um, as I go up um, and one thing to note as I go up the trunk is that um, it's tapering slightly so if you look how wide it is at the base of the trunk I'm gradually getting narrower as I go up um, this type of tree that I'm doing I suppose if you were doing it as a sort of a bonsai um, you would call it a formal upright tree okay where the trunk is just one um, long straight trunk um, I do uh, lots of other trees as well but this is a, a kind of a quick beginners one um, so you can see look getting more and more now as I go up and then the very uh, top of the um, trunk you just do it in, in a slightly different way you don't want it to just end otherwise it'll look a bit strange so you've just got to do a few branches at the top that kind of uh, taper to a point um, and the gaps they look a bit weird at the moment but that will become clear later what I'm going to do with the sponge in between them it's basically for the platforms of the foliage that are going to come on so now what I'm doing are a few kind of floating branches um, again this looks weird but if you imagine um, each kind of white layer in between the um, the sections of trunk is going to have foliage in it uh, what you're doing here is leaving gaps for where that foliage is going to be and you're just pretending that you're kind of um, continuing the branches you've done already coming from the trunk up onto the next level if you see what I mean um, you can have a, a picture in front of you if you want you could have a photograph of a tree and actually work from that um, but this is actually quite a nice one to do because you can kind of make it up um, and if it looks like I'm going quickly here that's just because I've done like <laughs> heaven knows how many of these a lot of these um, this video hasn't been sped up at all this is just me working real time uh, just to give you an idea I think this ends up taking about 20 minutes to do the whole tree um, right get a bit of sponge you can see how I've just torn that that gives it nice rough edges and then uh, this color is just uh, olive green but you want it to be quite strong pigment quite a lot of pigment maybe that doesn't show up particularly well on my camera but um, it's it is pretty dark um, and also you want to make sure you've mixed up enough I don't think I probably I mean I did mix up enough for this tree but only just so you could do with uh, mixing up a good kind of palette full of this the sponge technique is really fast um, but it does use quite a lot of pigment uh, quite a lot of paint so just bear that in mind but can you see what I'm doing here is basically just going in between notice how I started um, where the trunk is so I started by working up the middle of the tree first because that's when your paint is strongest on your sponge once you've done that first bit what I'm doing now um, obviously the paint is running out on the sponge so it's got a bit lighter so if you think about the sort of the outer extremities of your foliage you want those to to end up kind of fading out slightly so it doesn't matter if they're a bit lighter and if at any point you do need to top up your sponge with more paint just keep that in mind what you don't want to do is top up your paint on your sponge and then go straight to an outer edge of your um, foliage you want to go back and work back in the middle near the trunk again until it starts running out on your sponge and only then do you go to the kind of outer edges um, right what I do as well is just add a couple of extra like sort of floating platforms here and there um, again they look a bit strange at first because you're like what's connecting them you know they're just kind of floating off but we add a few more branches later um, and then you can connect them on uh, I'll talk about that when the time comes um, 
But again, as the, the sponge is starting to run out of paint, you can work back in and just make the foliage a little bit more solid, which is what I'm doing here. I've got the main shape of my tree on. I'm kind of happy with that. Um, but there are quite a lot of white gaps still in the middle. So I just work back into some of those and just make it look a little bit more solid. Um, and it also just softens in anything that you've done already, which is quite nice. Um, what I'm doing here as well is working back in right next to the trunk. Because if you think about it, these um, sort of platforms of foliage that you're seeing, um, a lot of them might kind of hang down at the back, or you might have extra platforms at the back, you know, from branches that you're not even seeing. Um, so it's important to not have too many white gaps all over the place. Um, if you're trying to make a sort of an older looking, you know, more mature tree, you want it to be fairly dense in the middle there. Um, and we add shadows and things to this later as well. Right, so that gives me my overall shape of um, tree. Um, what I'm doing now is going in with another green. Uh, I'm using St. Petersburg White Knights paints. Um, and in this set, this really, really dark green uh, is just called green. <laughs> Um, if you ha are not using these same paints, you could get a very similar green just by mixing, you know, any kind of sort of grass green uh, sort of colour with a bit of black, uh, and it just makes it really, really dark. So again, look, what I'm doing is going right next to where the trunk is, but you're just going on the underneath of each tree platform. Don't go on the top because obviously that's where you want it to look like the light is catching the top of each kind of layer. So just go underneath where it meets the actual trunk. Uh, and yeah, go darkest in the middle, and then exactly like I did with the rest of the foliage, um, as the paint starts to run out on my sponge, I then work outwards to the outer extremities and all the little tiny kind of floating platforms and things. Um, and when you first put this on, because it is quite a dark color, um, it can look a bit strange because the dark kind of appears a you know, really separate from the rest of the colours. But if you um, start blending it, you know, as the, again, as the sponge is running out of colour, you just kind of keep going and it softens in the first really dark that you put on and gives you almost like an in-between, more like a mid-tone um, green of the same colour. And that softens it into your original um, olive green, which is really nice. Um, so I really enjoy this and yeah it probably looks like my hand is sped up here but I promise you it isn't this is actual real time um, and again if I'm making it look easy it's not it's not um, me showing off or anything it's just it's just because I've done a lot of them I've done hundred, probably hundreds of these trees over the years with various students um, so I, I could probably do one with my eyes closed um, now probably my students will challenge me to do one with my eyes closed and it, it won't work but uh, <laughs> that's beside the point yeah so it's not uh, it's not about posing or anything it's just about doing things over and over again until you're kind of confident with them um, and it's like the same with different shape trees you know there's this one that I do fairly regularly uh, is probably one of my my kind of uh, best ones that I like to do but uh, once you've practiced doing different trunk shapes for different trees, um, you know, you can do all the various types quite easily. And this, obviously, this is more of a foreground tree because you're seeing a lot of the detail in it. Um, and it's quite big on the, uh, on the uh, page. But you could just as easily, you know, do smaller versions of this, um, either just using a brush or a brush and a sponge. But... Um, what you can also do is if you've got a really rubbish brush like a brush that's been stood on its end for too long or something and it's gone a bit you know all of the bristles are s sort of splayed out don't throw it away because that can be really good for kind of stippling and stuff on trees like this um, right what i'm doing here this is sepia uh, and the sepia is really really thick okay so if you haven't got sepia what it basically is is just a really dark brown so you could use something like burnt umber and just mix some black in with it um, and yeah it's really thick lots of pigment so what I'm doing is I'm going underneath that dark green of each uh, tree platform and I'm just putting a little bit on the top of uh, where the trunk is okay and then what I'm also doing is I'm imagining the light 
is coming in from the top left hand side of my picture and it's so therefore it's going to be catching the trunk uh, on the left hand side and all of the shadows that I want are going to be on the right hand side of the trunk so I've just gone down with a bit of sepia and I've just done like a sort of a dark stripe basically down the trunk uh, now what I'm doing is little flicks um, just again underneath each tree platform where the dark green is just onto some of the branches um, that might not be so easy to see I suppose on the screen but those little flicks they just look like tiny bits of shadow like underneath these tree platforms because if you think about where the foliage is um, you know that sticks out doesn't it so you're going to get a shadow underneath that a little bit um, right and I'll also go down uh, the right hand side of some of the branches as well just a few of the kind of bigger ones to make that show up okay what I did there was I went into my water and so I've just basically just watered down that sepia a little bit and I'm using that now to soften in the uh, really dark sepia that I've put on already if you don't soften it in it just looks like you've just put a dark brown stripe on the trunk which is exactly what you have done when you soften it into the trunk it starts to look like a shadow it becomes part of the trunk uh, it's not a kind of a separate line at all it's just part of the trunk um, you could spend longer doing this than I'm doing you could really kind of smooth it in if you wanted to uh, I'm just trying to show you the the basic way of doing it um, and then I'll start adding in a minute a bit of uh, texture into the trunks as well so bark texture again like you know I've probably spent too much of my life looking at bark <laughs> I don't get out much um, but even if you just you know look at bark a little bit I mean literally all I'm doing on this particular tree is just a few kind of um, vertical stripes really into the trunk that's just enough just to give it a little bit of texture um, but I have done these trees in the past where I've really gone for it and tried to make them even more realistic and I've done a, a lot of texture um, kind of horizontally and, and kind of in curves as well around the, the trunk which helps to make the trunk look a bit more curved as well um, but for this one yeah just a, a few vertical lines is kind of enough and you want to be doing that with a mid-tone sepia not a really dark sepia otherwise it would just look like you've got really dark lines like stripes on your um, trunk they'll be too obvious um, you want the shadow on the um, right hand side of the trunk to be the strongest and then you want it to kind of blend across um, with mid-tone right so I just am softening in um, a few of the branches and things with a bit more sepia oh, and what I'm doing here is any branch that comes from the trunk but is on the left hand side I'm just doing like a little sweeping shadow from now I never used to do this on my trees when I first started doing them uh, and then I sort of came across this and uh, it works really well because it makes it look like the light is coming maybe slightly from behind the tree as well hitting the branch and that branch is just casting a shadow across the trunk um, and it really does kind of add another element to your shadows and makes all the highlight areas look more like highlight as well on the trunk um, so yeah definitely recommend that um, right what I'm doing now is I'm going back and I've just watered down my sepia a little bit in my palette uh, and I'm just putting some extra branches on so you don't want these to be you know really really strong sepia really dark you want them again to be more of a mid-tone uh, and I'm just doing little flicks so we've got the main kind of tree shape in and you might be tempted obviously to stop at this stage which you could I mean it looks enough like a tree um, but these kind of last stages that you do all the finishing touch bits um, make it look uh, much more realistic I think so what I'm doing is basically a lot more um, thin branches uh, this is using a number two brush so it's got a reasonable point on it I'm just doing quite a lot of flicks uh, and it also helps connect any little platforms so the bit that I just did there look you can see there was a tiny little platform that was floating that I'd sponged on there which looks a, a bit weird if you've got one that's not connected to anything and just doing a few branches 
to connect them up uh, makes all the difference. And obviously, you know, trees in real life have got hundreds of, you know, thin branches and things, haven't they? So the more you can put on, uh, almost the better, you know. Um, it adds so much detail, it just makes the whole tree look a lot more mature. And, I mean, you could spend even more time than I'm doing on this one. I, I, I just wanted to give everybody the main idea. But, yeah, you could even, you know, if you wanted to make a hyper-realistic tree, you could um, switch down to a really fine brush at the end, you know, like a, um, a one or a, even like a sort of triple zero brush or something like that, and you could do really fine branches. Um, but, yeah, this is enough. And notice when I do tree branches, if you're not used to doing tree branches, um, what I'm doing is like little flicks. So I put more pressure on when I first put the brush down, and then I kind of, as I do the flick, what I'm doing is lifting the brush at the same time. And what that does is it just causes the branch to taper to a thin point as you lift it. You get a bit of tapering. Um, and that all comes with practice. So if when you first start doing it, because um, I've noticed this with a lot of my students, um, if you've never painted a tree before, what tends to happen is you go to put your branches on and you just end up with a big blob. Or sometimes you you get the pressure wrong. You start it off thin and then you put more pressure on as you're doing it and the branch ends up getting thicker as it goes outwards. Um, whereas obviously you want it to be getting thinner as it goes outwards from the trunk. Um, so think about how a tree grows in real life and just how everything, you know, tapers. So the trunk, is, you know, obviously gets narrower as it goes upwards and the branches are the same. Any branch you do coming from the trunk is going to go out and get narrower as it goes outwards. Um, just keep that in mind as you're doing it. Um, and obviously, you know, if you start, if you water down your um, sepia a little bit more, um, the really fine branches like if I was going to do this as a hyper realistic tree I would um, switch down like I say to a smaller brush but I'd also water down my sepia a lot more so that the finest branches are you know they hardly show up at all they're just done with a pale sepia wash right it's starting to get there now it's coming on um, I'm quite, I think I, at this point I was quite happy with the shape of it. Um, oh, incidentally, I was going to tell you that um, I'm working with like a uh, a webcam directly above this, and I haven't quite figured out how to do this yet. This is one of the first ones that I've done using the webcam, and actually, it's right. <laughs> the camera is like right in front of my head as I'm doing this, so it's not entirely practical. Um, normally, I I do these trees without anything kind of obstructing me but I'm slightly obstructed doing this. Um, right what I'm doing at this point I've taken some of the dark green colour uh, and I'm just going in like underneath the um, platforms but right next to where the trunk is okay and if you think about the texture that the sponge gives you when you use it uh, I'm doing a similar thing here where I kind of uh, blob it on next to the trunk and then I kind of texture it in a little bit as if um, as if I was using a sponge in a way just kind of dab it and it uh, causes like little spots and little kind of marks and just softens it into all the sponging that you've done already so what this is doing is giving you kind of extra definition next to the trunk where the kind of the biggest shadows would be and it just softens it in a little bit into the foliage um, so yeah, quite often it's all about kind of contrast at the last, you know, in the last stages you just want to kind of up contrast a bit and um, quite often putting darker bits on, especially in these kind of underneath areas, just makes the highlight areas look, you know, more lit up. And yeah, I really like that. Okay, so yeah, a bit at the base as well. Um, you could do plenty of things near the base as well. Like I, I was just doing this tree as a cut to white, just to show you the main tree. But you could easily like put a bit of ground underneath the tree. You could have a shadow, come you know, cast from the tree across the ground. You could put like little fences on and little bushes and things. Uh, again, some of the bushes you could put on with a sponge as well. Right, what I'm doing here is 
uh, going back to the olive green colour, just watering it down a little bit. Okay, and so you're making just a pale wash of that. And then what I do is just go into some areas, especially near where the trunk is. Again, it probably looks like I'm a bit sped up here, but I promise you I'm not. That's just that's just me because I, I know like this stage is really easy. I just go for it and just <laughs> block it in. So if you think about it, there wouldn't be any white you know coming through the trunk there's no kind of sky coming through the trunk so what I do is I go in and I just make it a bit more solid um, in that area I suppose if you leave a few bits of white it doesn't matter because it might just look like a bit of light catching um, some of the leaves and you know giving it a bit of a a bit of a sparkle in the middle um, but you can see what this does you don't have to do it like everywhere to the whole tree concentrate like on the middle where the trunk is and you can kind of blend slightly outwards from that uh, and this just makes the whole tree look a bit more solid I think. Um, incidentally if you were doing this um, and your dark green you know didn't soften in particularly well to your light green if there was you know too much of a difference between the two colours there's no reason why you shouldn't at this stage mix like a, an in-between green. You could even mix the two greens that you used together to give you you know that exact middle color and then you could go in and use that instead okay thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video don't forget to hit subscribe to see more similar things in the future